Hello my fellow YouTubers and welcome back to the channel. In this specific video what we're going to look at is how to download a Windows 11 ISO file to PC. This then allows us to in effect have Windows local that we can then burn to USB or CD-ROM drive, um, to CD via CD-ROM drive etc. And so very very useful. So open up your web browser. Once you're done with that, then what you're going to do is you're just going to do a search for the Windows ISO file. So for example, we would have something like Windows 11 ISO download or Windows 11 official download, something along those lines. And with that will then take us to the Windows website. So click on the download Windows 11 website and we can then open that and this will then show as the official Windows 11 download screen. This is a very, very useful screen to know about. You see you've got things like PC health checks. You've got your Windows release information status and links as well. You have various different sections to this as well. So your Windows 11 installation assistant. You can create Windows 11 installation media here. And of course you can download Windows 11 disk image ISOs for 64-bit devices. This is all free. Um, Windows has deliberately allowed access to their disks, so to speak. These are just virtual disks. Um, that's what an ISO file is, just a virtual disk. And it affords us the ability to be able to put this down locally. So once you've selected your product, uh, you can then just select your language. So that is what we have done here and click confirm. You'll notice that the link is available for 24 hours and we can then just click the download button which is your 64-bit download and once you've done that then it will start. I've actually sped up this video a little bit uh, because this can take a little while depending on your internet connection and your bandwidth but the nice thing is realistically speaking you actually only need to do this once so if you're in a workshop environment or if you're a uh, network administrator, things of that nature, you can actually preserve bandwidth by doing it this way. Instead of copying it onto multiple different flash drives and things of that nature or thumb drives, you can actually just have one image and then using special software, you can then just burn that image onto as many CDs and USBs as you like. Windows is pretty much product key dependent, so you can actually have, technically speaking, you have as many um, copies of Windows as you like, as long as you're not infringing on the end user license agreement, and as long as you're not infringing on things like your product keys that you're not downloading funny cracks and things of that nature. So we do not endorse piracy here. So with the download almost complete, uh, we just pretty much finish up. Um, I highly recommend you do read the site. It's a very, very interesting read. Um, and there's information on various different points here. With that done, we can just open up the download folder by clicking on the little folder icon. Once you have done that, we can then just take that uh, file and we can cut or copy it into a prepared folder that is on my desktop here, for example. The reason for this is just so that I can archive my ISOs and I can just put them away somewhere. For example, from here, we could then copy them onto a removable drive. Or if you have a file server, you can maybe put them there. Um, you can use these for things like Windows deployment servers as well. Um, so you can even unzip an ISO file in order to be able to get to specific files that you might need, like, for example, install or boot.wim. So this becomes quite useful. If you don't quite know what I'm, I'm saying there, that's server related stuff and we will be doing remote installations a little bit later on in another video. So the copy process is relatively rapid, uh, obviously because it's just local. So we're ready at uh, 31% and this will just finish up. With that, you can obviously just continue reading through the Microsoft website, should you wish. Um, look at the different aspects and click on the different links and see what's what. We will also be looking at another video where we will actually be dealing specifically with the utility that allows us to be able to burn to USBs as well. And we will be burning to USBs in two different ways. Uh, one from an ISO file and then one off the Microsoft uh, site. So that's quite useful to know. So if you are deploying via USB, you can take your ISO, burn it to USB, plug the USB into your PC, boot up on your USB and then could start the install. So with that almost out of the way, we are just going to prepare for the final step. 97%. So 
and the copy is now complete and as I said before you can always then put that folder wherever you like and you can just keep that archived on record. Thank you very much everyone. I hope you have an amazing day further and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.